So first of all, we'll be examining the cranial nerves, of which there are 12, and they're examined in order from 1 through to 12. Uh, but before we do that, the first part of any examination is to start with a, a general inspection of the patient. Uh, and from a neurological point of view, we're looking for things like muscle weakness, a facial droop, tremors, fasciculations, and also surgical scars. Uh, and it's important to also have a look at the back of the head, feel for any shunt tubes. And once you're happy that there's no overt physical signs of neurological uh, disease, the first thing to do is examine the first cranial nerve, which is the olfactory nerve, uh, responsible for the sense of smell. Uh, it's often not tested uh, in the hospital setting because it uh, often doesn't yield very clinically useful information in making the diagnosis. So the next thing to do is move on to the second, third, fourth and sixth nerves which all control vision. Uh, and the most important thing to do is start with a general uh, a gross assessment of the vision. So you can ask the patient to say, can you see my, all of my face? What colour is my tie? Uh, Purple. Good. So you know that vision is largely intact. And then we use one of these, which is a Snellen chart. And for this, we're testing how far down the, the, uh, the chart the patient can read. Uh, and for this exam, you're allowed to leave the patient's glasses on because refractory errors in the lens don't, don't uh, count as a neurological diagnosis. So the first thing to do is get the patient to cover one eye, hold the chart about 30 centimetres away from the eye and get the patient to read the lowest line they can read. Mm -hmm. Uh, nine three seven eight two six. Good, and then cover the other eye. And again. Uh, nine three seven eight two six. Good. Then the next part of the examination is to uh, quickly again assess the visual fields, just by putting two hands up in the top quadrants and asking the patient which hand they can see moving. The left. For Good. Me. And the other side. On the right. Good. And then the lower quadrants, same test. Right. Good. Left. So again, there's no gross deficit in visual fields, but they should be examined in more detail. So once again, with the patient looking directly at my face, I get them to cover one eye. And with my hat pin um, or my finger, I just get the patient to tell me when they can first see my yes. finger coming in from the each quadrant again. Yes. Good. And hopefully it should correlate. Yes. Good. With my vision. Yes. And the same thing would be performed for the other eye. So the next part of the uh, second nerve examination is to assess the patient's blind spot. Uh, so again, cover one eye, get the patient to stare at the tip of the pen and tell me if it disappears. Yes. Good. And tell me when it comes back. Yep. Good. And again, tell me if it comes back. Yep. Good. And it's from below again. Yes. Good. Okay. So assessing the blind spot will pick up uh, things like a central scotoma, which can be associated with multiple sclerosis or optic nerve swelling. Uh, the light reflex is the next part of the second nerve examination, um, and it assesses the sensory component of the reflex. Uh, so we get the patient to take off their glasses for the first time and bring the torch in from the side, watch both pupils contract, check the other eye, and finally for a Marcus gun pupil, so normally, with a torch shot in the eye, the pupil should constrict, uh, but um, a positive Marcus gun test, the pupil will abnormally dilate. The final part of the uh, neurological exam for the second cranial nerve is to check fundoscopy, but it's uh, a difficult test to teach in this format, so we won't uh, perform that today. The next part of the eye exam is the third, fourth and sixth nerves, which are all examined together because they all control movement. And again, with a pen, patient's glasses on, Ask the patient to keep their head still, just follow the tip of the pen. Ask them if they can see double or blurred vision, first of all. So do you see double or blurred? No. no? Good. And then move the eye, move, get the patient's eyes to move to the extreme vision looking for nystagmus. Good. And the other side. And again, they shouldn't see double or blurred vision. No. And the final test is to test the accommodation reflex, which is done by asking the patient to look at a spot far away. And then uh, on my command to focus on a point about 30 centimetres from the eye, so look at my fingers, and the eye should converge and pupils constrict for a normal response. And that completes the examination of the eyes. So the next test is 
to test the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth nerve, which controls the sensory component uh, to the face, as well as the motor component for the muscles and mastication. Uh, and it's also the sensory pathway for the jaw jerk reflex and corneal eye reflex. So uh, again, we test with test sensation to sharp pinprick and also to light touch with some cotton wool. And we test the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve, both sides. We just start with sensation first to the first division. So you should be able to, so it's important not to stroke the skin, but just light touch mm -hmm. in all three divisions. Should feel the same in each division. Yes. And then again with pinprick, should feel sharp and it should feel the same on both sides. Yep. Good. Each division. The corneal reflex uh, can be done by asking the patient to look off to the side and just very gently bringing the cotton wool in and just touching the cornea and both eyes should blink for a normal response. The jaw jerk is done by asking the patient to just slightly open their mouth. Good. Finger on the jaw and the little tap. And there should be virtually uh, a normal response is to have no jaw jerk present. And the final part of the uh, trigeminal nerve examination is to examine the muscles and mastication. So a quick look for muscle wasting of the masseter or temporalis muscle and then ask the patient to clench their jaw and you should be able to feel the symmetrical muscle bulk on both sides. The next nerve to examine is the seventh nerve the facial nerve, which controls the motor component uh, to the muscles of the face. And it's quite simply done by asking the patient to wrinkle their eyebrows. You should be able to see wrinkles on both sides. Hold them there. Close your eyes nice and tight. Good. Keep them closed. Good. Show me your teeth. Good. And finally, puff out your cheeks. Good. And a little tap to make sure there's no subtle weakness. Uh, and, of course, it's also responsible for the motor component of the jaw jerk reflex. The next, uh, the next cranial nerve is the eighth cranial nerve, which controls largely controls hearing. And again, uh, just a quick functional assessment can be done just by uh, getting the patient to cover one ear and just very quietly whispering into the opposite ear and seeing if the patient can hear what you're saying, uh, and then repeat it with the other ear. Uh, and then a more formal test with the 256 hertz Tuning fork is to test, first of all, Rinne's test, where the vibrating tuning fork is placed on the mastoid process. And once the patient says it stops, they, they can't hear it anymore. Stopped. Good. If you bring it back in front of the ear, they should be able to hear the I can hear that. fork mm -hmm. uh, because the air conduction pathway is more sensitive than the bone conduction pathway. The next test is the, the Weber's test, which again... Tuning fork in the centre of the forehead and a normal response is to hear the fork in both, in both ears. Both ears. Good. Uh, the next nerve to test uh, the ninth and 10th nerve, uh, which control palatal movement, um, the gag reflex, and at the same time, we can also quickly assess the 12th, uh, the 12th nerve, which is the hypoglossal nerve, controls the motor components of the tongue. So we just ask the patient to open their mouth Good. And straight away, without the patient realising, you can look at their tongue and see whether or not it's fasciculating. Get the patient to say, ah. Uh -huh. And we can look at the uvula uh, to make sure it's midline and doesn't deviate. Um, and the final test is to test the gag reflex, uh, which can be quite unpleasant for the patient, so we won't perform it today. Um, or a more useful assessment of the ninth and 10th nerve is to get the patient to swallow a little bit of water and uh, look for a, an abnormal cough if they can't swallow adequately. Uh, and finally, we come to the 11th nerve, uh, the accessory nerve, um, which controls the trapezius muscles and the sternocleidomastoids. So we ask the patient to shrug their shoulders, keep them there, and hold against resistance. Good. And look to one side, push against my hand. Good. And the other side, push against my hand. Good. And we should be able to see the muscle contract, and you can also palpate muscle bulk while you're doing that as well. Uh, we have assessed the 12th nerve already as part of um, our uh, looking inside the patient's mouth and that completes the cranial nerve examination.